Hello and welcome back to Film Exaggeration. Let's talk about Twitter. This website is one of the greatest and worst things I have ever used. On one hand, it allows me to connect with people and lets me be less professional than I have to be on Facebook, and in my opinion, is pretty user-friendly. On the other hand, it is terrible for debate, as everything can be taken out of context, and it creates more drama than 50 competition reality shows. And then there's the polls. Earlier this year, I pulled a poll on Twitter asking my followers to choose from a list of four movies for me to review. You know, spice things up a little. The choices were Norbit, Dirty Love, Atop the Fourth Wall of the Movie, and How Green Was My Valley. It was a close call between Norbit and Atop the Fourth Wall, but in the end, Norbit won. So I could have watched a Best Picture winner, or a pretty solid internet fan film, and instead you guys picked the movie with Eddie Murphy and drag. Do you hate me? It couldn't even do that right, because guess what? Dirty Love won Worst Picture that year, and was written by Jenny McCarthy. You know, the model slash anti-vax spokesperson. You guys picked it, let's go! Norbit is a 2007 Eddie Murphy comedy directed by Brian Robbins, known for Good Burger, Ready to Rumble, and the Shaggy Dog remake, and written by a team that includes Murphy himself, his brother Charlie Murphy, and Jay Sherrick and David Ron, who would later go on to help write Zookeeper and the Smurfs. While making a decent profit, it was panned by both critics and audiences, receiving a 9% on Rotten Tomatoes, and currently sitting at number 93 on the IMDb Bottom 100. It also had 8 Razzie nominations and won three, Worst Actor, Worst Supporting Actor, and Worst Supporting Actress. Yeah, it was one of those ceremonies where a man in drag could win Worst Actress. It did get nominated for Worst Picture, but lost to I Know Who Killed Me, and you know, I reviewed I Know Who Killed Me back in 2016, mostly because none of the reviewers I watched had done it yet. And as the time of me recording this, none of them have touched this movie either. So let's see how this turned out. I mean, how bad could it be? It was nominated for an Oscar. For makeup, but still. This is Norbit. So we start with a narration from Murphy as Norbit, telling us how he was left at an orphanage as a baby. I like to think my parents loved me very much, but just didn't have the means to properly care for me. I can see them researching all the orphanages in the area, trying to make sure their precious little boy was raised in the perfect environment. Is that gonna be his voice throughout the whole thing? Looks like it's back as far as it goes, Respucia. You know, Respucia sent me down here to get the usual. You guys are open, right? They don't tell me you guys bought the bath store, too, sucking the jelly out of them donuts. Well, you left, you know, and there was nobody there to teach me, and Wong don't ride. Yeah, I was wondering, could you run these permits downtown for me? Find somebody who gives a rat ass, because I... I sure as hell don't! Oh, no, 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 no. Alright, let's go. So Norbit is dumped at a Chinese restaurant slash orphanage, headed by Eddie Murphy and Yellowface, Mr. Wong. Clap. On a brock one. Can't give these away. You know, I could complain about how racially insensitive this is, but that would be too easy and, quite frankly, if this didn't have racism, I would feel cheated. But I can barely understand what he's saying. My children got an MSG barrel! Oh, they're half gonna fall out again! You stupid orphan! Nobody want to board often? So Norbit's young life is a tale of misery. Mr. Wong yells at him, nearly kills him, and his best friend Kate gets adopted, forcing him to remain friendless. And when he goes to public school, he is bullied by twin Danny Bonaducci's and then befriended by a big old girl named Rasputia. Get your ass up and hold my hand. Okay. How you doing? Ah! Everything changed once I had Rasputia as my girlfriend. Ah! Be prepared, because this is our premise. Also, I don't know if this is bad green screen or bad lighting, but this looks terrible. Rasputia also has three brothers. Big Black Jack, played by Terry Crews, Blue, played by Lester Spite, and Earl, played by Clifton Powell. These guys are extortionists. Here you go, Norbert. Say the best piece for you. What's that? Turkey ass. Eat up, sucker. This is just mean-spirited. I mean, adult Norbit's voice is just grating, but young Norbit is fine and likable, and I don't want to see this shit happen. I started working as a bookkeeper in a family's business. I'm expecting some important calls today, Norbit. So when you answer the phone, try and sound white. He already does sound white. He has a better white voice than Cash, and sorry to bother you. So Norbit and Rasputia get married, and Mr. Wong even gives a speech at the reception that feels like it goes on forever. And also, Big Black Jack tells Norbit that if he upsets Rasputia, he'll... Well, you can guess. Hey! Somebody needs to take a big hunk out of my cake! <laughs> Try 
no looking at it. I ain't had no cake. It's her wedding cake. Why is this an issue? Back when I was in the game, I used to tell my hoes, hoes, ain't no man gonna pay for the cow if he can get the milk for free. Mm -hmm. You ain't gotta worry about this brother buying the milk because he just bought the whole damn cow. Who the hell are these guys? Okay, so apparently these are Norbit's ex-pimp friends, Pope Sweet Jesus and Lord Have Mercy, played by Eddie Griffin and Cat Williams. When did Norbit make two pimp friends? I have absolutely no idea. So after the entering the new house scene that goes on too fucking long, and the sex scenes that are basically the same joke... Merry Christmas! Not gonna lie, this feels like abuse. Okay, never mind, it is abuse. And that's basically the rest of the movie. Norbit is stuck in this emotionally, mentally, and physically abusive relationship with this awful woman. She hits him, mocks him, lies to him, and does everything to make him feel powerless. Now some of you may be asking, why is this kind of abuse the central premise for a wacky comedy? Well, the only answer I can come up with is that this is because it's a woman abusing a man, despite the fact that she is much bigger and stronger and has three brothers that will do something bad to him so long as Respucia says so. But if the sexes were reversed, this would never have been greenlit. Also, her voice is obnoxious too. Norbert, how many times I got to tell you when you drive my car? Don't adjust my seat. What's the guess in that home? How dare you insinuate something like that? You know damn well you clean up all the vomit. You do it. I love them. They're just like amusement parks. Except you ain't got to get off the ride to go to the bathroom. Then who was eating a turkey ass? Well, where the hell you think you're going, bitch? Shot? You ain't got no money. You ain't got no family. Everything is in my name. The car, the house. Shut the fuck up. Anyway, the brothers are trying to get the orphanage from Mr. Wong in a scene shot in Battlefield Earth Vision, but he refuses, threatening them with a wailing spear. Get my pistol! Get that dude is crazy! Let's get the hell out of here! Why don't they just come back with guns? Rasputia is taking a dance class with a trainer played by Marlon Wayans, and you know, I just realized Rasputia doesn't actually look that fat. I mean, yeah, she's obese, sure, but not enough for the comic set pieces that happen with her constantly breaking shit and hurting people. So the trainer is a pervert, and this leads to the two sleeping with each other. So she's also a cheater, meaning there is not one redeeming quality of this woman. Look, I told your ass ain't nothing happened, and the next time you see it happen again, I'm gonna knock your teeth out your mouth. Norbert tries to stand up for himself, making her angry. The queen of whores! Ah! <laughs> Hey, Norbit! This is fucking horrifying. This is as scary as most thrillers I've seen. Again, if this were a big man chasing after a meek woman, then this would never be considered funny. Well, she eventually gives up, and I will admit, this puppet show did get a bit of a laugh out of me. Well, why don't you get up over your lazy behind and go down in a rib shack and get your own ribs? Or better still, why don't you just call Buster and tell him to come over and power tap you? Because in addition to being the pig of the forest, you're also a saddle tramp whore! Sorry, I have a weakness for adults swearing in front of small children. Norbert then meets a woman who reveals herself to be Kate, played by Thandie Newton. Just a few years before this, she was in the Oscar-winning Crash, and now she's in Norbit. Don't worry, Thandie. Just 11 more years and you'll be in a Star Wars movie. Sure, it'll be solo, but still. She's buying the orphanage from Mr. Wong, and she wants to get it caught up with Norbit. So he gets the dance instructor to come over to distract Rasputia. And that's really the last we see of him. Bye! And he goes to meet her, but it turns out she has a fiancé named Dion, played by Cuba Gooding Jr., leaving Norbit sad. Well, you know, you've been eating so much lately, there's a very strong possibility that the car is shrinking. It might be shrinking the car. Okay, this woman is more frightening than most villains I've seen recently. I'm not laughing, I'm genuinely unsettled. What else could she possibly do? No! <laughs> Did she just kill a dog? Lloyd's in the hospital because of you! Oh, it's okay, he's just in the hospital because killing a dog would be pushing it over the limit. Norbert tries to leave, forcing Rasputia to lie. Norbert, you just can't leave! Norbert, please! I'm a child! Why would you lie about that? Why don't you just threaten him with your brothers, who earlier in the movie said they would hurt him if they ever upset you? It's just a kissing booth. Call it what you will, but Pope Sweet Jesus is taking half. Is that Christian Shaw? Oh, you poor woman. Norbit introduces Kate to Rasputia, and we get our mandatory fart joke. <laughs> Kate starts talking to the three brothers about renovating the orphanage, and when they learn she'll be buying it from Mr. Wong, they hatch up a plan to get it from her. Come here! 
You want me to give my hat? Wait, what happens? Yeah, screw it. Rasputia chases some kids into the bounce house, which no one even tries to stop her. And you know, this really does show the inconsistency in Rasputia's weight. One second, she's barely making more of a dent than these kids. The next, she's sending them flying through the air. It's raining little white women. My prayers have been answered. So, are you a pedophile? Also, we never see that other girl again, so I'm just gonna assume she died. Respucia sees Norbit dancing with Kate and knocks him out with a speaker because domestic abuse is funny. After a very unfunny scene in the hospital, we see the brothers going up to Dion. I ain't sticking around raising no damn orphans. I got kids of my own I ain't even bringing up. So you was just hustling her? Break it to a gentle for me, would you? Oh, so this guy was just a dick too. Is there one person in this movie who is likable? They tell him they're planning to open a titty bar at the orphanage, and so he agrees to help them. Kate invites Norbit to a water park and then threatens him with defibrillators. Yes! Yes, 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 yes. okay, stop. No! Forget likable. Is anyone in this movie fucking stable? So Rasputia tags along for the water park, and her and Kate get in an argument over skinny bitches and fat bitches. I don't know. But then we get the scene that was in all the trailers of her going down the slide. The crew say there's a weight limit, but don't put up much of a fight. You know, I remember seeing the trailer for this when our school took our class to see Freedom Riders, and no one was laughing, and that was a theater full of stupid 8th graders. <laughs> She's dead. Hey, you're dirty. Oh, come on. At least commit to the joke. Kill a kid. We then get a boring romantic montage with Kate teaching Norbit to ride a bike and having picnics. Remember, she's getting married in less than a week. I respect you. Well, that song's ruined for me now. I don't do this for my husband. Girl, I do this because I have a reputation to uphold. Everybody in this town know that Rasputia Latimo is fine. Ain't I fine? Oh, I'm fine. You are. Well, you can say a lot about Rasputia, but you can't say she has no confidence. This woman is basically that Chris Rock skit about big, fat, black women personified. The brothers tell Norbit to get Kate to sign some papers that will allow them to continue selling alcohol at the orphanage slash titty bar. I guess this is it, guys. Hey, thanks a lot for all your help. Thanks for making me fly. Fly like a flock of bears, baby. Literally, all you have to do is take off the glasses and he won't look nerdy in the slightest. This is like a gender-swapped version of She's All That, except not funny. I want to make a toast. Oh, sure. <laughs> to old friends. Seriously, can you not tell that he's into you? How stupid could you possibly be? We're in Norbert. Say nothing about man. Why are you looking at me like that? I don't know nothing, okay? <laughs> He's on a date with that five skinny guy! But you and your brothers told him to go get those papers signed. You don't know it's a date, you, you think it's business. Why would you tell her that? Kate takes Norbit to the church Dion and her will be getting married in, and the priest has to do a rehearsal. They end up kissing because they're cheating bastards, and Rasputia just so happens to drive by and sees it while it's happening. Oh, that's convenient. <laughs> God damn it, she could have died. Those boobs had to act like an airbag. By the way, Norbit, you don't know her fiance is a dick, so you're an asshole too. Give me that oh. I got some killing to do. Seriously, is everyone in this town so afraid of her brothers that they won't call the police? Norbit gives the brothers the signed papers and then. Expecting oh. a letter, Norbit? Seriously, this is the scariest movie I've seen in years. In fact, come October, just like I will with Smart House, I'm gonna need to make a reminder to myself to see if any of the horror movies I watch are scarier than this. Why am I supposed to be laughing at this? Why, what am I gonna do? Kill a bitch. Excuse me. You heard me? Rub her out. Take her down. Ice the bitch. Oh my god. I think I realized what they were trying to do. They were trying to satire those Lifetime movies. You know, the ones where the woman is abused in that way that only happens in a small amount of abuse cases, when then she goes and kills her abuser. 
I mean, they still failed at it, but if that's what they were trying to do, I mean, I'd at least give them something. I mean, the only other option is they're incompetent. But this is Miss Pretty Little Thing's little face. And Norbert, if you ever see her again, if you ever talk to her again, if you ever so much as think about the bitch again, this is what's going to happen to her. Okay, in order for my theory to hold up, he has to kill her by the end of this. There's no other way. Great, she's in the bathtub. Just grab the toaster and throw it in. No, instead he tells Kate he never wants to see her again, but later that night, when he tries to leave, Mr. Wong shows up. You can't run from your problems, Norbert. Black people run fast, but problem even faster. I feel like this movie created the alt-right, or at least started giving it momentum. He sees in the mail that a background check on Dion that he had sent out for earlier and I forgot to mention has some serious dirt on him, but before he can tell anyone, they lock him in the basement. Respucia and two of the brothers go to the wedding where Mr. Wong walks Kate down the aisle. Where are the people who adopted her? Norbert escapes with the one brother telling Big Black Jack. Shh. Alright, that got me. I mean, Terry Crews punching someone can easily get a laugh. The two pimps realize he's coming and so try to interrupt the wedding with all the black church cliches. Can I get an amen? Amen! Well, I can't deny I am a sucker for black church cliches. They even have a musical number. While those shenanigans are going on, we get a chase scene between Norbert and Rasputia. It's not very fun or exciting, but we have to fill the other man coming in at the last minute to stop the wedding cliche. We're gathered here today. I object! Oh, for Christ's sake. Norbert. Norbert! Norbert! <laughs> Why are you putting all your good jokes in the last 15 minutes? I just had to sit through an hour and a half of bullshit, and now you're gonna start being funny? He tells Kate that Dion had been married to several women and screwed them out of a lot of money in divorce settlement. And he even invited them the night before. And it just so happens that they were able to drop all their things and come from all over the country to this church at the exact same time, and why am I questioning this? This leads to the brothers threatening Norbit and the people the brothers threatened before to stand up to them, and oh god, I don't care. Somebody just call me a whale. Yeah, I'm a whole. <laughs> Well, that seemed very out of tone with the rest of the movie. This movie had a talking dog in it. Kate and Norbert get married, they buy the orphanage, this happens. And as for Rasputia and the brothers, well, they open their titty bar in Mexico with Rasputia as the lead stripper. So, wait, the bad guys got exactly what they wanted, and this woman, one of the worst villains in cinematic history, gets a happy ending? Well, there goes my lifetime satire theory, they were just incompetent. <laughs> yup. This is not a comedy, this is a romantic thriller with comedians as the stars. It's horrifying. The movie portrays a very realistic abusive relationship and expects you to laugh solely because it's a woman abusing a man. It doesn't matter, it's still uncomfortable to watch. And yeah, it does make it clear that Rasputia is the bad guy and you're not supposed to like her, and I don't think it's impossible to do a dark comedy about an abusive relationship, but you can't do it like this. The characters are all awful, Norbit is annoying, is a dumbass tool, and everyone else is either a stereotype or the worst people to ever live. The tone isn't consistent, the weight isn't consistent, it's not very well made, and it's just not funny. Again, because it's too scary to actually be funny. To put some positives, they finally have some good jokes near the end when Norbert finally starts standing up for himself. The soundtrack is good, and it actually did earn the makeup nomination. Yeah, we can joke that this terrible film is Oscar nominated, but the makeup really is outstanding. I actually believed there were three different people there, and the split screen work is excellent too. I do think they were all really trying to make a good movie, but this premise needed to be handled very carefully, and they just wanted to make dumb jokes. I don't know if I would say this is worse than I know who killed me, but I wouldn't recommend this to anyone. This is what you guys made me watch? Is this just because I didn't jump aboard that fuck channel awesome train last year? You gotta let it go, guys. In Cartoon Hero, I mostly blame you for this, but at least it's over. Wait a minute. It's July 2019. 
What happened 10 years ago in July 2009? Watch Wizards on Deck with Hannah Montana. Premieres Friday, July 17th at 8, 7 central on Disney Channel. Ha. I was looking for Norbert's police whistle.